Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment and in today's video I'm going to show you how to laser weld acrylic. Let's get into it. For those of you that don't know what laser welding acrylic is, it is taking two different pieces of acrylic, putting them face to face when they're in the machine, and then cutting through them at the same time and cutting through them enables it to fuse the edges together where it cuts. As an example, I have a few pieces here. So as you can see, I took a piece of translucent acrylic and a piece of eighth inch black acrylic. So what I did is I stacked them on top of each other in the machine, just like this laser cut my shape and it ended up fusing them together. So now if I try to pull them apart, they are not coming apart at all. So this is an example of laser welding acrylic together. There are a few tricks to this process and getting it to work well. So I will run through a few different examples using different thicknesses and different types of material. So I have a few shapes already designed that I'm going to be using but I will show you exactly how I did it. There are a few ways that this can come in handy. For one, if you don't have the acrylic glue or things like that, that actually are pretty messy, connecting the different colors, this is a great way to do it. Another reason why is sometimes I use it for lettering. So if you want to do say a recess sign where you have lighting coming through the back, but you want the front of the letter not to have light shine through it, you can use a clear acrylic on the back and then say a black acrylic on the front and light will shine out of the sides. There's a lot of cool applications for this process and the ways you, you can use it. Uh, so I'm just going to show you how the process works, how I do it, and I'll experiment with a few different thicknesses just to give you an idea of how I do it. Now, one of the first tests I'm going to do is a super thin acrylic that is more of a dual color. So it's black on one side, gold on the other side, and I'm going to attach it to a translucent acrylic. Now I have run into problems using super thin acrylic where it doesn't bond super well. I'm going to try my best here to get this one to work, but I will show you using thicker acrylic uh, that does work. So that's one thing I have found is using super thin material uh, can cause the process not to work. Uh, but let's run a test and I will show you how it turns out. All right, for this process to work, you're going to need two different pieces of acrylic. What I need to do is actually peel off the masking on each piece. So in this case, pull the masking So I need to pull the masking off and have a bare acrylic surface on each one. So the thin one, I'm going to do it on the black side. So the way the process works is you actually need to put these face to face in the machine like that. What I end up doing is I usually put the heavier material on top to help hold down the thinner material. So you just wanna line them up like this. Yes, they can move around right now, but you'll stack them in the machine and then you will cut out your letters from here. So what I'm gonna do is stick this in the machine just like this and we'll do some test cuts. Over at the machine, I'm going to lay down the first piece of acrylic with the gold side down because the black side is the bare side. Then I'm going to take the translucent piece and lay it on top and just push it down. Make sure that it's nice and flat. I will tell you that if you have any kind of material that's not flat, that it has some kind of warping to it, this process may not work well. They need to be as flat as possible. So for example, you see if this piece is holding down or kind of flapping, if this is not touching, it will not weld it together. 
So it is very important that both of your pieces are as flat as possible. I will say that this does take a lot of testing and it does happen to where parts of this will weld together and parts of it won't. But let's go ahead and run this test and we'll see how it turns out. All right, so I have a few examples here and this comes back to the thickness of material. So if I don't really touch it or play with it, you can see that there's the gold, there's the translucent, and you can kind of see the little black in between. Now, the problem is, especially with this thin stuff, if it can focus, geez. Okay, here. Right away, pulls right off. So this is the problem with thin material when you're trying to do this process. So what's happening is the laser is going down and it is basically passing these two materials and it should fuse them together. Well, if there's not a lot of material to try and fuse, it doesn't work and it will just pull right off. So every one of these, and I will show you. So every single one of these pieces will pull right off. It is a bummer because this process could lead to some cool results, but the thin acrylic just doesn't want to work with this. So if you have a thicker multiply acrylic, uh, that would work. But see, it's just every single one of them just pulled apart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the material so that it's got the gold side up so that you know it's not a thin being on top or bottom. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a couple more shapes this direction and show you what happens with that. All right, now I have three new shapes where I cut it with the gold on top. I will say that it does work a little bit better than the other method. Um, the, the big issue here is because nothing is holding that down, there's no weight to it. Um, it's not completely flat because it's so thin. So what happens is just a piece of it won't be down. So if I go around to the different corners, some of them are completely welded together. So three are good, but then you get one that's not and it comes right off. So with the M I have a little bit better success this side's all welded down, but this corner was not, so comes right off. So on the letter A, again, one corner doesn't go and comes right off. So if you're trying to do this with really thin acrylic, it's not going to work really well because it just doesn't have the thickness or height that it's going to need to bond properly. And it's unfortunate because it could be some really cool stuff, but if you have thicker multiply acrylic, you should be able to go through the process. Now, the next test I'm going to do is using a piece of eighth inch acrylic and a piece of quarter inch acrylic. Now, I have made pieces out of this already. So here's a couple of the shapes. They are translucent on one side, black on the other. They were made out of this stack up. So there's a piece of quarter inch translucent, a piece of eighth inch black. Uh, it's still stuck together right here where it cut. What I'm going to do is cut a couple shapes uh, with the translucent side up, a couple shapes with the black side up, just to show you the examples of doing it both ways. Uh, but with that in mind, let's go ahead and cut this one. I have both sets here. So this first set was with the translucent on top, the black on bottom. They honestly look about the same. The only difference you may see is the taper. So there is a slight taper when you're cutting with the laser, especially when you're cutting thicker stuff. So you may see a little bit uh, of an angle on some of the pieces, 
but they're still fused together perfectly. They're not going anywhere. With the black ones, I will say that there's more time for it to run across the black piece and it does melt pretty well onto the clear. Uh, but again, there's not a noticeable difference between the two. They, other than looking at the taper and the angle and everything like that, uh, you probably couldn't tell which material I had on top just because of how well they bonded together. Now that I've showed you that process with a piece that's already been bonded together, I'm gonna use two fresh pieces. So this is actually black and eighth inch, and I was wrong, it's not white, it's clear. And the quarter inch, uh, turns out I don't have white on hand. So the first thing I need to do is prep them. So to prep them, all I'm going to do is peel off the masking on one side of the material. So peel one side off of the clear, and then I'm gonna grab the black, peel off one side of the black, And when I put them in the machine, just like with the other ones, I'm going to put them face to face, bare acrylic to bare acrylic, and machine them just like this. Since it doesn't really matter which material is on top, uh, I'll probably just cut them with the clear on top and show you what they look like. So I'm gonna lay the black down first, make sure that it's nice and flat. Then I'm gonna put the clear one with the bare face down Kind of just push down, make sure they're nice and flat together. Once it's all set up, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the shapes. All right, so here are all the pieces. I'm just going to peel the backing off of one of them. So you have the black on one side, you have the clear on the other, and you can actually see the black through the clear. I will say that you will see some, if you're using clear at least, you may see some spots. Uh, there you go. You can see those spots where it got hot uh, and actually helped fuse it together. So typically if I'm using this kind of stack up where I have clear on one side, I'm usually lighting it from the back side and shining light out the sides so the black is gonna be what people see. But real quick, I'm going to go ahead and finish unmasking these. Now that you've seen the process, here are two of the results. So same shape, and if I can get it to focus. So they are the same shape, they are different colors. One is translucent and black, one is clear and black. So these are just to give you a couple of examples of how to do the process. Now, the applications for this process are pretty much endless. You can do all kinds of things that are really cool and imaginative. One of the biggest things people use this for is signage and doing lit up signage. This just adds another level of creativity that you can put into all of your projects. Hopefully this video has been helpful and has taught you something new that you may not have known. If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you know when I come out with new videos. And be sure to follow me on Instagram at Maker Experiment where I share things like this along the way. If you have other ideas for videos that you'd like to see, put them in the comments below and I will do my best to create videos of those. But I want to thank you again for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.